Hi, as part of preparing photos for the web, we often want to optimize them, which means usually make them smaller. So let's say we go out and we find a photo on the web. I'm going to just search for wine. I'm on Pexels, and these are free photos. Often you want to give an attribute for them, and you'll see that when we download it. So let's say I grab um, this photo here, with the wine glasses, and I grab the free download, and I'll take the largest size available. And when I click on download, so this is a pretty big picture, 3840 by 4630. It's larger than a, a normal screen size, laptop screen size. And you can see that they want you know to give some credit, so you can just copy this and put that in your page somewhere, um, if, and it would give a link back. So um, you can definitely give some attribution here. But let's say, yeah, so I have this um, picture, and it's the Celebration Cheers drinking glass, and I can see it's 2.8 meg. Now, I'd really like to get out of the megabyte size range, you know, when I'm loading photos on the web. I'd really like to get down around two or 300 max. I mean, as small as possible, but definitely two or 300 max. So the one thing I can do is I can use a tool, a compression tool, and there's one on the web, tinypng.com, where I can um, just drag and drop a photo onto this. And you can do, you can see up to 20 images, 5 meg each at a time. So as soon as I drop that, it starts compressing it. And compression just involves removing, you know, colors that are redundant or extra space so that you end up with a picture that is a smaller number of bytes. And we want to hopefully get down into a range that we can display this on our web page. Because if you load something that big, it will slow down in the whole loading of the page, and people will sometimes walk away before it's loaded. So we're still in the one megabyte range. I could try doing another compression on that, but um, what I might want to do, and so you know, if I if I downloaded that, I could look at it, but it still seems a little large. So before, rather than do that, I'm going to go try and get the next smaller size. So let's go down to 1920. This is still a big picture. Covers, you know, the full screen on a laptop for sure. So um, and we're probably going to use this in a much smaller dimension. Again, you give, get the credit there. And um, now, if we look at our we have the the one. Let's let's remove this, the old one. So this new one is starting at 907 pixels. So if I drag that on here, oops, let's just drag this 907. So now we're we're down, we're compressing from 907, and generally you won't see any difference in the after the compression. So we could look at a before and after if we get down to a size. So here we're down to 300 kilobytes. And you can see that's a lot of compression. And we could probably load that on our page. So let's look at the difference. Um, first of all, we need to download this. And if we go in here, we can see here is our original picture at 907 kilobytes. And then if we look at the 303 kilobytes, it's really not not noticeable to the human eye. So um, this compression is is really valuable for optimizing for the web, um, and it, it shouldn't really change the quality of the image you're displaying. All right, so that's just a quick look at uh, image optimization.